Well, I just want to uh, thank you for the invitation to be here. You know, this is a format that uh, allows for a true conversation and an exchange of ideas. And then many of you have been very generous this evening with uh, with your thoughts on how we eliminate poverty, not just reduce it, but eliminate it. And though it, and it is it is doable, we just need true leadership to actually get that done. Uh, some of you may know me, but you know one of the reasons that I ran for trustee of the school board is that I strongly believe that education is key to interrupting the cycles of poverty that we see in our society. And, uh, but we do see poverty in our education system. And, you know, in some respects, uh, poverty hides extremely well in the city of Waterloo, uh, not so much in Kitchener. But we do see it in our education system. Uh, children every day come to school hungry or without the appropriate supplies. And we, are, we have been trying to respond to that. Uh, in our in our school system, um, you know. But when you have children who are experiencing poverty, you also have families and adults who are experiencing poverty. And this format today actually indicates why poverty has continued to grow. Uh, the affordability of life in, in our society is truly becoming an ongoing issue. Uh, we've seen the HST increase, uh, heat and hydro. We've seen uh, rents go up. Actually. The affordable housing issue in this province has not gotten any better under the McGinty government. Uh, we, uh, when you look at how we spend our money across the country, Ontario spends the least amount on creating affordable housing. People cannot get jobs if they don't have housing. You know, uh, it's one of those stability things. Even the TD Bank of Canada has weighed in on this issue. So we are also seeing, uh, when I was talking with the infrastructure folks, about the importance of transit. Uh, you know, if you don't have, if you can't afford transit, you can't get to a job, and transit is a number one issue. One of the issues that the NDP is going to be addressing, though, is a 50-50 uh, cost sharing around public transit. Uh, the province and the municipalities need to work closer together on these issues. We will pay 50% of the operational costs of transit if there is a fare freeze at the local level. That way, we keep uh, transit affordable. We are seeing um, students, uh, I heard from students uh, around post-secondary and the debt load and how crippling that is. Uh, clearly these are, these are issues that require our full attention. Uh, but, uh, but there are strategies in place that we can, that we can address. Uh, one of them, of course, is creating jobs. That is the one way that we will, that we will address our, our economic instability. We have a job creator tax credit which will reward small and medium sized businesses uh, for creating jobs, real jobs, for you, for the for new graduates. Uh, it's very simple. You create a job as a small and medium sized business, you get a tax credit. We also need to have a good hard look at our corporate tax rates. The government continues to give away millions and millions of dollars that go to the profit margins of large corporations. There is no correlation between corporate tax giveaways and creating jobs. That's your money, it's my money. We need to spend that money more appropriately. But you know, we also have to look at a comprehensive plan for poverty because housing and childcare and, and senior care uh, all connect you know, to, this, to this plan. Income security for people who are living in this province has been at risk for some time and it has been on the back burner. The NDP has a plan to create jobs, to address the tax unfairness, and we were able to prove that in the last 2012 budget by working in a minority government to strengthen communities. And you know, in a minority setting, your voices are heard. That is why you need to elect a new Democrat to Queen's Park on September 6th. Got no money? 
we'll take small denomination bonds in our paychecks if we can use them for hydro, taxes, medical, and licenses. And you gotta admit, money that you can use for hydro, taxes, medical, and licenses, pretty good chips, right? Even in Ontario. So, I've been asking people at the Occupy demonstrations and during elections, would you take your raise in provincial bonds instead of going on strike for cash? I had a doctor, a lady doctor at a birthing clinic. They were protesting insufficient funding. And she went, of course. Well, of course, if you can spend it on your OHIP, you gotta pay. Your taxes, you gotta pay. Your hydro, your licenses, you gotta pay. Why use your cash when you can use your bonds? So why not take bonds? Save the government interest. So I was out at the teacher's demo today in Toronto, pass off my flyer, saying, hey, if you guys took bonds, we'd save so much interest, we could pay you twice the raise. Now, not too many caught on, but that's okay. The Argentine teachers caught on. Now, I don't know why they're brighter than ours. Maybe ours aren't worth the money and the Argentines are, but they caught on in Argentina, even if ours didn't catch on. But they could still, if you go out and tell them. Let's look at these problems here. Education. Gee, what's wrong with that? No money. All right, essential public services. What's wrong with that? Oh, we need more money. Housing, what's wrong with that? Not enough money. Income security, what? Well, not enough money. Unemployment, why unemployment? No paychecks for job, not enough money. Um, healthy uh, social infrastructure. Well, if it healthy, the infrastructure means there ain't enough money. Child care, what does it mean? Not enough money. Direct support, well, that's more money. Preventive services, why not more? Not enough money. Employment, why don't? Not enough money. Yeah, uh, diverse. Uh, anyway. anyway, the point is, every single, all these problems, and you're looking for all the solutions to all these problems, when fixing the money fixes them all at the same time. Every single union in Argentina got paid with bonds. The housing people, the education people, the services people, everybody got paid. They didn't have 12 different people screaming for 12 different answers. They had 12 different groups screaming for one same answer. And then they got it, and it worked. So, basically, last night at the record meeting, I was excluded from the debate, so they heard no solution. The other candidates, well, major parties, they just do what the party says, but they don't have any ideas what to do. So I went home last night really angry, and I took that video. First of all, I have a video of the police taking me away. It'll be up there later tonight, too. But I took their debate, and I played it, and I sat in front of it, and I chopped them up for two hours. Every barb, every joke, every incompetency. And it keeps saying, we need to have this, we have to have that. Well, those are aims. They never told us once. How to do it? Where to get the money? Oh, we're gonna cut here, we're gonna cut there. So anyway, you go and see the video when it gets up tomorrow. I was angry, I was vicious, I got a vicious mouth, and uh, I'm sorry other candidates who cheated me yesterday, but your parties have been cheating the little guys for so long, you're taking the brunt of the beating, and I hand it out on my video. Rich, 
We have the super rich, the extraordinarily rich, the fantastically rich, and everybody else. And this is a situation which has not occurred because the Canadians thought that this was a good way to go. It's occurred because we have governments in power in Ontario and at the federal level who are backed by these forces and they have implemented those kinds of policies which have ensured that the poor in this province have never been so poor ever as they are today. And where there has never been so much unemployment such a huge attack on social programs, on affordable housing, on everything that makes life, life livable, and now on top of everything else, on democracy and on labor and democratic rights, it's extraordinary. And uh, so I want to invite you to think about when you cast your vote, what you're voting for. And if I were you, I wouldn't vote liberal or, liberal or conservative. I would vote for parties that can tell you they have endorsed every single item on your list. We need affordable housing. We need to expand Medicare. We need to double uh, uh, social assistance and ODSP. We need a guaranteed annual income. We need to substantially raise pensions and the minimum wage. We need affordable housing. We need rent controls. Uh, we need long-term care for our elderly. Uh, we need dental care and vision care for everybody, not just the poor or just, not those just who are working for everybody. This is Canada. We are a very wealthy province and a wealthy country. So the big question is not, should we do those? Yes, we should do those things. I, I say we should do it. And I know I'm in the majority, and I know you all agree with me. So the big bugaboo is, well, we can't pay for it. It's impossible. It's a dream. Well, sure, we can pay for it. We absolutely can. The problem is we don't have governments that are willing to do it. And the governments that, that if, if they were going to, willing to do something, what would they do? Well, they would immediately cancel all of the tax cuts and, re 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 and reverse them, the corporate tax cuts. You may not know, but Ontario and Canada have the lowest corporate tax rate in the industrialized world. Unbelievable. In Ontario, it's 11%. Canada is 25%. The United States is 45%. So if they were to cancel that, if they were to double the corporate tax rate for starters and use those funds to invest in social programs, in, raise, in creating jobs, in raising uh, incomes, in uh, uh, providing affordable housing, the child care program, it could be done. But that's the way to do it. And uh, I invite you to look at our platform, a 10-point prescription for a different direction, for a, for a people's recovery. And you have lots of ideas here, and I invite the Liberal and Tory candidates to so have a look. Please, please, why don't you go ahead and implement this?
The Green Party of Ontario really focuses on quality, uh, accountability, and public consultation. And I think that it's that public consultation that is really uh, the biggest part of what can play a role here. That being able to attend an event like this, where I do get to hear about all of these really important issues, I wish that I had had more time talking. I didn't actually get to all of the all of the um, areas of discussion. Um, but so I think you know one of the things that we do need to address is the issue of good jobs. We need to make sure that people have good jobs available to them and jobs that they can then that they can then keep. Um, and that's something that we address in our platform by by uh, offering tax incentives to businesses to provide those. Another thing is to uh, help people find those jobs. I know that there are some people, I was, I was hearing about somebody who had um, Tourette's and had a very difficult time dealing with interviews. That person is fully capable of having a job, but just getting the job is, is such a difficulty. And I, we need to establish a system that really facilitates that. Uh, affordable housing um, is one of the centers that I, I spent quite a bit of time at. Um, and, and you can really hear that, that there just simply is not enough being done in this. And the idea of putting more money into new affordable housing um, is one that's going to have such a long time to actually be put into place, 10 to 15 years. Um, one of the ideas that we were thinking maybe something to talk about is the idea of requiring any new development to have some proportion of affordable housing in it and giving tax incentives to developers to provide those. So then we, we have an ongoing set of, new, of uh, new affordable houses that are in a mixed environment. So we stop ghettoizing uh, people who have, who have to live in this situation. So clearly I don't have a lot of time, um, but what I would like to say is that I'm always up for discussion, uh, and so I'd love to learn about your particular situation um, and to bring that voice to Queen's Park because clearly we don't have a strong enough voice there. keep any secrets anyways. Everybody in the room hears it. So my name is Alan Bettler and I truly am grateful to be here this evening. I did come with a great amount of trepidation. I'm not one of those who has an uh, ability to go out and speak extemporaneously. Uh, at least I don't think I do. So anyways, my remarks this evening might be a little bit disjointed. But uh, I represent the Ontario Libertarian Party. To some it's the big, bad, greedy Libertarian Party because we believe that solutions to our problems don't all come from government. We believe that as individuals, we have to work together. And I see a certain amount of that happening in this group this evening. I'm glad to see so many coming out. But um, we have a problem in Ontario, and that is that we are broke. We are in a bad, bad situation. And things are not going to get any better. I don't care what anybody tells me. I don't care, we can have all the optimism in the world, the way we are headed right now, there's a lot of greed, a lot of people who are looking after themselves and their own interests. Things are not going to change. I see the sign up here. Let's have a poverty-free Ontario. Well, that would be nice. But the good book says the poor will always be with you. I don't like that, but that's reality. And given the fact that there is greed in this country, in this world, I believe it's true. So what can we do? I think that as individuals, we need to work together. We have to all do what we can to look for solutions. I heard some tonight over here, and I was only in two groups. I heard about gardening. That was one thing. And I, I'm sure there's a ton more of a solution. Working together to produce your own food. And uh, like I said, I'm a little disjointed. Now, one of, the, one of the participants here this evening, I was glad to hear from her, because she echoed the, the feeling that, you know, uh, our future is very uncertain and that there's going to be a lot of dismal things happening. I also heard tonight that there's many barriers that people face. Some people are employable, it's just tough to get a job. You know, they don't have transportation. Um, 
Maybe they don't have a full set of skills, so there's barriers. Other people, well, they have people in their family that are disabled, and so you know maybe they can't get a the job. They're working full time to look after those people in their family who are disabled. So this evening, I want to say I don't have all the answers. I'm not going to pretend to have all the answers. But I know, as I've said, I know it's important that we all work together. I'm going to tell you a little story. I was once on social assistance. I know what it's like to be on social assistance. I know what it's like to have somebody show up at the door with an envelope with $500 in it. That was an individual working to help our family. It brought tears to our eyes. But let me tell you about a fellow named Kay. When I was on social assistance, there was a lot of people who ridiculed me, who put us down. Kay, he was a thoughtful fellow. He came up to me one day, he said, Al, he said, I think you would be good in the transportation industry. Furthermore, he says, I'm going to pick you up in the morning, and I'm going to take you down to this place in Cambridge, and we're going to see if they will hire you. Now, if I had gone there, they would have said, hey, it's your resume. That would have been the end of it, perhaps. But he asked for the driver manager. He came out, and lo and behold, they happened to know each other. Kay had been in the industry for a long time. They knew each other. They chatted real nice together for a few minutes. And then Kay said the reason he was there. And the bottom line, folks, is I got a job, and I've been in that job ever since. We need to work together. If you people can get together, government is not going to be there to do it for you. You know, they might have some solutions, but we are broke, and we have too many greedy people out there who expect to be given everything, everything handed to them. So I'm sorry, folks, I don't have all the solutions. I just wanted to give you a good dose of reality. That's all work together, you know. I've helped with food banks and that sort of thing. My time is up. Talk to me later. Thank you.
one of the things that uh, was discussed was the Social Assistance Review Commission. Um, the, the Liberal government has started this review commission to look at social assistance in a holistic way and try to figure out um, what we could do better. And that report is actually going to come out in the coming weeks. And I can't believe I have a minute left. And, and so, um, you know, that report's going to come out and it's going to be important for us to listen to those recommendations and, and, and look at what we can do to make social assistance uh, make more sense. I'm going to skip ahead. I also sat at the education table. Um, and there's the importance of education in, in lifting people out of poverty. And we need to look at the big picture when it comes to education, I heard. Um, you know, and the question remains, what is our education system going to be? So um, I, I'm, I'm running out of time. This evening went by way too fast. Um, there's so many more tables that I wanted to visit, so many more people I wanted to speak to. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be here this evening, and I just wanted to let you all know that if you have any particular questions or comments, uh, please feel free to contact me. My contact information is in the back there, or talk to me after this evening. Um, I wish I could have uh, talked to everyone, but I want to let you know that I'll raise your concerns with Minister John Malloy, the Minister of Community and Safety and Social Services. Um, just one quick second. I'll, I'll raise those issues with him that I heard here tonight, because I think it's important for Kitchener Waterloo to have a strong voice at the government caucus table. And that's what I hope to bring to Kitchener Waterloo. So on September 6th, please vote for Eric Davis.